Oh, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 747, Airplane Edition of Flow Wrestling Radio Live. I'm your host, Christian Piles, joined by James Dean Raider, Ben Funky Askren. Ben and I are back from Iowa City. We are back from the Mecca. We are back from the duel of the year. And I think it lived up to the hype, Ben. It was a lot of fun. Lived up to it. It was extremely exciting. It was very tense. There were a couple moments of, of incredible atmosphere. And you know, obviously that's where we're going to start today is with the Penn State win over Iowa. And, you know, as as I watched the duel and I've been thinking about it, like, okay, you try to you know, what is all what does it all mean, right? That that age old question. Like, and what does it mean? What is this meaning of life, Christian? What's the meaning of life? Well, we could get into that uh, another episode, maybe this one. But what did it mean that Iowa was right there, but Penn State won and they won nineteen thirteen? And I feel like there's a trap that you could easily fall into with this, which oh. as an Iowa fan. And I'm not saying there shouldn't be reason for optimism if you're an Iowa fan, because you know what? They showed that they're not that far, far behind, and they definitely had some opportunities to win the duels. But I do think there's a trap of the proximity of where you can just nitpick it. DeSanto gets one finish, or Jaden, you know, doesn't chest wrap himself for to give up the two, or Jacob Moore just finishes the match and then you won won the duel. But I think on the other side of that coin is Penn, this was the most adverse scenario that Penn State's going to wrestle Iowa in, right? At Carver Hawkeye Arena, most insane crowd. And they're just going to be, it, I, I think those close matches, this was, I view it as it was the opportunity for Iowa. And they they let it slip through their hands. And I don't know if they're going to get another opportunity as good as this one. And well, be, and the, the other thing that we're going to add that you need to add in that I, maybe I cut you off when you were about to say, but. This is probably the most likely format for them to beat Penn State in also. You would think so. You would think a duel yeah. would would work better for them. But mm-hmm. um, I, I also think for the other side of the coin still is who wrestled well for Penn State? Who are you like, dude, this who guy looked great. Well for Penn State? I mean, did even Aaron Brooks? Uh, I mean, Aaron Brooks... I mean, Hildebrandt kind of. But I mean, like, that's not a real test. Until the like the last ten seconds, I would have said, "Man, Hildebrandt really didn't do anything." And then he he rolled him over. Um, Bear, I don't. Bearclaw was a little tougher than I thought he was going to be. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, besides that, um, I'll guess that's a no one. Yeah, I mean, Aaron uh, looked great in the first period, but even then, it the, he slowed down a little bit. Um, Bo Bartlett, but then. No- uh, to reverse that, I guess Iowa, you would say what Cassiope and Marinelli, Cassiope and Marinelli your expectations. I I think you could be optimistic to see Austin get it closer than it had been, that right? Um, yeah, how? Uh, yeah, because the last one he kind of got killed in that was in Carver Hawkeye, right? Because they didn't they did not wrestle again that year. Well, or did they? They did. Um, they wrestled. They wrestled at Big Tens, and it was extremely close. It, the Big Ten match was almost, I would say it's almost a carbon copy of the match we just saw, their Big Ten 2012 yeah. match, with Austin in hot pursuit, Austin in on almost all the attacks, but Roman yes, too. Roman finding a way to win those matches. Um, so I, I think, you know, we, we can go through it kind of match by match here a little bit, but I think for Penn State and Iowa, I I think you leave this edge Penn State moving forward, and I think the gap's going to probably widen, right? But Well, but the gap was, I mean, I don't know if you guys um, I have updated your flow rankings, but the gap was pretty li- wide last week. And I actually, I guess, I'll just say for me, it feels like the gap is more narrow to me than what I anticipated it was going to be. Um, I thought Nick Lee would win more comfortably. I thought RBY would win more comfortably. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I actually thought Carter Strachey would well, I, I know I picked um, Kemmerer, but I was prepared for the chance that, you know, Strachey was now four points better than him. Yeah. Well, the big thing for me is if Drake's not 100% or can't go, that's a big hit. Yeah. That that's yeah. like, that's widening the gap for me. Agreed. Well, but NC, you guys got them eight at NCAs right now, and you know, eight, eight is not no points. It's not a lot of points though. At the same time, yeah, I I think it's just one less 
way for them to. I mean, if they can't score any yep, points at one twenty five, it, it does hurt. And Penn State yep. is healthy currently. Um, and and Iowa, yeah. you know, I don't know if there's something going on with Ironman's wrist or DeSanto's hand or whatever. But I'm. Why not, would you see there? I mean, it, I didn't even see Ironman be taped. I don't know. He just kept me- they kept messing with it. Yeah, he's been a nervous twitch like maybe. two years, hasn't yeah, he? I don't know. Maybe it's nothing. Um, so let's 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 talk about this the duel. So twenty five, not a lot yes. to say other than you know Jesse underneath this didn't have any answers for the double legs. Yeah, and it not at all. Seemed, it seemed like the strategy was going to work of just laying there and not going over, but there's so much. He got he by just laying there. He allowed and by so much. work you mean not get majored. Yeah, yeah, that's that's exactly what I mean. Um, he wasn't work, trying. It wasn't, it wasn't, he wasn't trying to, to get win. A win. No, he wasn't oh, trying yeah. to win at any point really. Uh-huh. I mean, he didn't shoot, and so the but he allowed so much strain on that shoulder over an extended period of time. When you're flattened out that long, the the turn came. It came late, but he got it and ended up losing by nine. So, but really, there, there's not a ton to discuss with that much. But 33, there's I think a ton. There's a ton in here. Oh yeah, because there's a, there's a ton, but it's also the same story. Yeah, to me, it's like it wasn't really that close. Really? What? Well, you're crazy. DeSanto. You're okay. yeah, you're crazy. Not. DeSanto got in, you're but not never really came that close to finishing. RBY oh, looked so one, comfortable. No, the first one. The he first had, one. He was, he was doubled was, off. Yep. He was doubled first off. One he was and and he couldn't finish then? When is he ever going to finish? And then it was just like RBY scores. Okay. Two couple things. I, I will agree. I okay, hold on. I agree with JD in the second, third period. He was not close there. First period, he was very close. And he like didn't really even try to finish hardly ever. He just got in and stopped. Yeah, I think he is still flummoxed by by some of the things. So I want to talk about this situation because there was I th- I think when you think of someone like Austin and everything that he brings to the mat from a mentality, from an effort, from his energy, from his emotional standpoint, I I don't understand some of the tactics that they were they were using there for, from the Iowa side, right? You've got yeah. a guy who is yeah. overly overly emotional at times to his detriment. We've seen this materialize time and time again with Austin. This is it's known. The no, theatrics yes. on the sideline with the foot thing <laughs> were so over the top and so it wasn't just it wasn't just uh one guy or Tom or Terry the, the entire sideline freaking out theatrically every time Roman yeah. would would grab the foot what I didn't yes, think and I, helped, I said this Christian on. this is not illegal well okay it's not not a penalty but here's here's the point in in all of it okay if it is sure. what whatever that's what the brick's for. So throw the brick. You're so sure that you're you're jumping around and screaming, all of you, you're so sure it's illegal, then throw the brick. Otherwise, you're just revving up your guy for to thinking he should be getting a point when he, the point's not coming to the yes. point that Austin gets up and puts his hands on the ref and gets, you know, forehead to cheek on Dude, the official. We, we couldn't see that. We couldn't see that from where we were at. You couldn't no. see it? No, we did. It happened no, quick, quick couldn't. enough that I, you really didn't. Maybe we were looking elsewhere. Maybe we were looking at the theatrics on the, on the sideline. Maybe. But we got all this chaos. I feel like chaos around Austin is the last thing you want. I feel like calm, right. order, be the president, and throw the brick if it's illegal. If it's illegal, yeah. Then, then throw the brick. I don't know that it is. I think, I think it's potentially dangerous at times, and that's how it was interpreted. But if it's illegal, yeah. then, then. There's there's a mechanism for that and it's called the brick, but I don't think they're doing them any favors by that. And then in the third period, I didn't understand. And again, no one no one would let me coach anyone really, much less Division One college wrestling. But when he wanted to go optional, I think that was the move. Let him up. He's moved this guy all around the mat. Let Carver get involved and get that stall point. That way you don't have to get the finish. Instead, he yes. wasted forty seconds on top. And it seemed like yeah, he might have been was... able to get to it. And DeSanto, won. he saw, he looked there, he he gave the optional. They told him to ride. He rode. He attempted to be a leg rider, which he does sometimes. But the idea that he's going to ride Roman out or get a, a minute and 20 yeah. of riding time Roman, that seems very far-fetched. 
and it didn't make sense. It yeah, didn't right. make sense to me that he would want to ride that long, um, or that he would be able to ride that long. And put him where he's good. You know where he's good. He's moved him. He moved Roman around that entire time. And I think Everywhere. two minutes of what we saw in the neutral, he would have got that stall call. And I think he was I, even still. Yeah. I think he was close at the end. Yeah, honestly, um, you know, when you think about his troubles finishing, because and I'll even go a step further, JD, to what you said. Um, the, so the place he keeps trying, he tries to lift him, right? Head side single, lift. RB Wise is a good job kind of like sitting on the head and not being lifted. But the one time he did get him lifted and actually got through, he grabbed the other leg and then he just froze. He literally just sat there, di didn't, go, didn't go anywhere, wasn't trying to even finish. So it's like, well, what are you even trying to lift him for? If you're just going to lift him for a stalemate, that's kind of weird, right? So, uh, you know, to your point, Christian, if we if he could just push him around, he got a stall call warning and a point. He would have only needed one more. I, I don't know. I don't think it would be a bad idea to change his game plan to just pushing. Just pushing because he ain't having any success shooting single legs. Just, just pushing and no, maybe a half shot on the edge when you get him there. I don't agree because I think – why? The, how commit because how committed his attacks are. Well, a couple of reasons. One, but he's spending so much time underneath there, not getting anything. But it 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 is the, the it does impress upon the official effort. And I think if you're just pushing, That's why pushing shoot on the edge, shoot on yeah, maybe shoot on the edge. But also, I think I I I wouldn't change I wouldn't change much about the strategy. A few things I would change. I would let him up in the third. I would shoot more of your high crotch. I would go back to that. I mean, you got to it right away and then maybe Roman took it away but also maybe not maybe just he just was the single he felt was more there but I think if he goes to the high crotch more that's an option I think yes get on your feet and move him around for sure but I don't think you stop shooting because the threat Roman wasn't threatening to counter really he wasn't threatened to counter score which I think but, is but hold on. But the only thing that but it's not like uh Austin's starting that I'm I'm actually literally watching it on the other tab. Uh, he's like freezing and holding the leg here, and that's it. And then and then once right, once he's shooting in, boom, get into a decent shot, RBY is stopping the head, attacking the the foot, right? And like this this current one they're in he's been on the leg for thirty four seconds now. So you eat up such gigantic amounts of time when you when you shoot in and then there's no progression. Yeah. Okay, I'd, I mean, a really large time block. It just got stalemated. Thirty six seconds. He was in there. Yes. However, all that said, if in the third period he's on his feet, moving him around, and and takes two or three shots in that period, or three or four, I think he gets the point. And then we go yeah. to overtime, and who knows what happens in in in, uh, in sudden victory. Okay, so thirty three. I think there's there's a ton to unpack in. Um. And I'm I'm not sure what else other than I think, man, DeSanto is is going to remain a tough matchup for Roman and a tough matchup for Dayton Fix. You know, um, he's been tough matchups for those guys historically, and I think he's going to be in those matches. But is is he ever going to get that extra point he needs? I'm not as sure. Uh, I'm not sure either. Um, Dayton Fix actually, I don't know if we're going to go off the Iowa duel. Dayton Fix had a little bit of a slowdown weekend because um, he had been bonusing almost everybody. Uh, Did you see the Skagley wrestle? I didn't watch that match. No, I watched uh, twenty five. <laughs> but he he lied on bottom and just locked his hands on his belly so that Dayton could not turn him. It was actually it was it was great. <laughs> that's what uh, it was a perfect doing that stall. In Iowa match. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, Ibarra? Jesse Ibarra. Yeah, but he won five one five one, and prior to that, I think he only had one regular decision. Well, what one thing? I mean, Oklahoma State—they had obviously an off weekend and a very weird week with with the AJ stuff. One, not having yeah. AJ hurts your team a lot. He's your he's your yeah. best or second best wrestler, and you know the emotional effect of that. I mean, yep, I don't know, course. but it seemed like for them to to lose those duels and the kind of way they, I didn't think they looked great. So, no, nah, that was all Iowa. That was, that was all I, yeah. Iowa I mean, owns the state of Oklahoma now. Sorry. Well, it's their property. Um, both Iowa State and you and I, 2 0. Yeah. Okay, and 41. Could go 3 0. The state could go 3 0 against Oklahoma State this year. Damn. So, let's talk 41. <laughs> because this was this focus this morning. Well, yeah, I mean, come on. Up. Let's stay on task. Iowa Penn State <laughs> just happened. And y'all want to talk about Iowa State, Oklahoma State. No. There's, there's there's one ta there's one target here. Talk about that. Then we'll we'll have time to talk about the other things. But yeah. 
I'm, I'm locked in. Because I want to talk about this 41 match where the, uh, tactically, you know, I thought Ironman, you know, for Nick Lee to not generate offense and score a takedown, I think is notable, right? I think that yeah. says come Big Tens, come NCAs, this this has not been completely solved on, on the Nick Lee front. But it's not for sure. from the tactical perspective, you're like, what? I mean, Jaden Ironman, you've been in college how long? You're you're trying to chest wrap. He got. I think he got excited when he almost threw him to his back, and he said, "I'm just going to be absolutely." And he just got so revved up. Let me try this now. And then it's like it's Nick Lee. This guy beat Yanni and Zane. Uh, th- he's not going to. This is a very savvy wrestler. He's a national champion. Like you can't make those kind of mistakes. This is not Dresden Simon. No offense to Dresden Simon, but th- there's no, a difference. Can... Nick and, Lee did take yeah. him down with the shot at the end of the second. I thought. Well, the chest wrap was a... Uh... That was the first takedown. There was a takedown right at the end of the second also. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that one. I was thinking there was two takedowns in the match. The first one from the chest wrap and then the um, the sudden victory. No, he, remember, he takes him down right at the end of the second and rides out, so he's up, he's up five. Because there was right like one or two seconds left. And then he didn't have to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then Jaden gets the takedown from just like fakes, go behind stuff. And then in sudden victory... Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know what that was. He got in really deep, and then it was just like a one second it was count. Like read the momentum. Yeah, it was like it was, it was. I think literally it was like he said, "I'm gonna go all the way for this, or that's it." You know, like I think it was the same the as the, the chest strap. Like he, he threw him, but couldn't get the takedown, and he came back up and was like, "I'm riding high. Let's get this takedown." Gave mm-hmm. it up, and it was the same. He got the takedown at the end of regulation and was riding high. Mm-hmm. And just uh yeah yeah he was ready so it was uh i th- i think for for ironman you can say man that was definitely not his best performance and he could win but nick lee can i think they can both say s- similarly i was mind blown when Jaden got that takedown at the yeah, end yeah me too the way he, he got it too <laughs> he really had the, he just got him completely off balance out of sorts with his fake and, his, and hustled and, behind him and the crazy thing is like you know Jaden's not gonna shoot like he's faking the, yeah. but he's the likelihood he does not he's not someone who pulls the trigger on, have a on leg, attack. leg attack no no so it was weird to see nick sort of really thrown off by but it was it was a pretty it was a high energy sequence for for sure um yeah. but then he loses in, in immediately in sudden victory and then at that point in the duel you're like oh man it's going to be really tough for them to to win this duel and they still had a chance to win the duel because they won the three we said they had to win. 49. Bo Bartlett really didn't even give him a chance I'm, to win. I'm mad at Bo Bartlett, and you got to stop being his fan because he, he lost me the spread. I said I said Max Muir was only going to get one takedown, but Bo Bartlett couldn't get off bottom. He got ridden forever. 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 I mean, what do you give him? Almost two minutes of ride time, I think, between the second period and then the, the last takedown. It was a long time. No good, Bo Bartlett. Yeah, he's got to get off the bottom for sure. Um, so that happened. I mean, Keegan, uh, Keegan O'Toole. Sorry, I just got a text about Keegan. Um, what happened? What do you know uh, about him? No, what people want to know what's up with him. Yeah, he's wrestling this weekend. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, good. Be good. Uh, right. I was texting with him last night. I don't know if you guys saw it. Well, I believe it was you guys who posted it. Uh, let me just check to make sure. Uh, there was this Russian that did this move on Kyle Snyder, and it was like, what? Why did you just pull off there? In the I finals? What? In yeah, the finals? Was it? Oh, it was Fanatic Wrestling posted about it. I, I do. Hey, listen, if you guys love my technique, I got 19 DVDs on Fanatic Wrestling. Free advertisement here on Flow Wrestling. 19? Go to Fanatic Wrestling, buy them. 19. Well, so I did some of my brother. Me and my brother combined of 19. Ben, I don't think, I don't know if there's a record, but if there is, I think you have it for the most places to con- to buy your technique. The championship well, we production. over the years. Well, yeah, at the chain. That I, was way. Oh my yeah. god, I made those in two thousand seven. Yeah, <laughs> I bought. I bought. I bought a couple of those. Um, there, fanatics. You had your own thing, Rudis. Yeah, my own thing for a while. It's too much work. Some's on Rudis. Well, I mean, there's obviously some just floating around the internet on Facebook or YouTube. But hey, to get back to this, this. So me and Keegan were texting about this uh, Russian ankle. But it is so slick. Oh my god, the one it's in the, the finals. The Uregan, right? Yes. Yes, so when Snyder has not dead rights and he just picks it. It was nice. Yeah, he attacks head outside, and the guy essentially falls off and somehow gets pressure enough to dump Kyle backwards off. Like it's, 
It's so really good. Christian, you got to watch this technique right here. It's really weird, but it's good stuff. And I, so I sent it to Keegan and we were going back and forth about it. Well, we're glad Keegan's okay. Hope he learns yes. that ankle pick. Uh, 57, not a ton to say other than C- Caleb Young was, was never really close to a takedown. He, he the lack of offense is slightly <laughs> concerning. It's high, she, highly, Shane highly Sparks concerned. have a lot to say about this match because there was a lot of mat returns. Well, this is it's going to put him kind of at odds with his philosophies because he on seventy four. On the one hand, seventy four one one end of regulation. He wants both those two trapdoor gone. Tra- yeah, he, he uh, no overtime that. in that match. Well, hold on. Uh, yeah, that was a great match, but we'll have to hold his feet to the fire. But that they were at least trying match. to score points. Caleb yeah. was not trying to score points in in that. Uh, he was not. That, Matches like it's like he had the ride out on his mind, and that's what it was. Um, Marinelli you, came out, and he I don't know why it's like at one a couple minutes into this, we're like, this dude's not gonna be able to go seven minutes with with Marinelli, but uh, yeah. it was not something we considered going into it. That was never anything we mentioned at any point. Yeah. Like, this guy can't go Big seven miss. minutes with Marinelli, and he's been a coach for the last five months. And then as it's happening, it's like, how did we not mention that? I think uh, with like 30 seconds to go, he was kind of like, why the F did I come back to college wrestling? <laughs> well, yeah, no. Big miss. <laughs> He's like, I probably should have gotten a little better shape before showing up for this duel. <laughs> uh, so I, That was I thought... one they probably should have honestly put Cray Edsel out there. I mean, maybe he's looking great in the practice room, but like, yeah, we didn't talk about that. But listen, Kale, Kale's in the room with him already. He should have a little better plan than we should. Yeah, but I mean, I think you still go with your best guy and at least let him, at least let him feel it. And I, I, I still think that probably, even though benefits they, Bergy now, he, yeah, no, I'm well, I don't know benefits, but you don't know how it's and how much was it just the emotions of Carver and all that stuff get wrapped up yep. in it too. Um, yeah, I don't know. And also, he's up at a different way. I don't. I, I think he must be a market improvement over Creighton for them to basically as soon as it. As soon as he says he's coming, like he was immediately in the lineup after not even yeah. being on the team in the fall. So it must yeah. be a market improvement. And then Kimmer, I mean, 74 was, I, I literally think it was like one of the best matches I saw all year. It might be my favorite match of the year. And to JD's point, there were no takedowns in this match, but the exchanges were so high a level. A lot of good exchanges. Carter, Carter was so consistently in on the legs. It was almost surprising, but then even more surprising. It's not surprising to see Kimmer be defensively splendid, but to see him thwart. <laughs> oh, that's to, a T-shirt right there, Chris. Stop, stop the show, stop the show. Someone make, someone make a T-shirt. This man just said defensively splendid. <laughs> that is a JD. That's a T. Uh, it's gonna be full Trademark. wrestling on the front, on the back. Defensively splendid. Yep, Kimmer, that's freebie. You can you can put it on all your shirts. Mm, too late. Already put in a trademark. Crap. Nope, we got the trademark. JD filed it. Nice. <laughs> so he he uh he was so good. He was so good there and really thwarting all the the attacks from Starachi to the point where there were a few times you were like, you couldn't believe that he didn't score on Carter. And then Carter yeah. finds a way to sneak out of all these really dangerous positions after getting in great positions from his own attacks. It, it made me so excited for the rematch and likely third match. Yes. There's no doubt for me that these are the two best guys, but there's some really good dudes out there with Hayden, with Mackay, um, and you know, could could they pull an upset for sure. But I do think these yes. are the two best. I uh, say no I, doubt with supreme confidence. Well, I think the one that would probably threaten the most, Makai, I, I think it's Hayden to me. Hayden's the yeah. one that's, I mean, Makai's obviously won before, but he hasn't looked great. I think he's had two overtime, you know, one against Peyton, and then who is the other overtime? He had another overtime match this year. So Hayden's the one I'm like, this dude could come in here and do some damage. For sure. But thinking of like the way Makai wrestles when he's at his best, like the defense he put on against Bull when he beat Bull. It kind of is similar to me, like Starachi, a little bit. Sure. Like if he could yeah. do that game plan, get out just fine, not give up a takedown, send in the tiebreakers, maybe get a counter somehow. That's like the path to victory over Kimmer. Yeah, and when I'm saying they're the two best guys, I I'd really believe that. But that doesn't mean it's not like a Dayton 
Roman situation where I'm like, see you Saturday night. Like, I feel really confident that's just probably going to be what it is. I don't feel as confident in that, but I think skill for skill, these are the two best. But yeah, the other guys will have their say. Like, Miles Martin didn't make the NCAA finals his senior year. Like, he was yeah. obviously the best guy, but he wasn't then. Can we talk uh, about the real issue here, Christian? Yeah, let's get into the real issues. That was two points takedown in overtime. Ooh. Everyone's saying you have to have the leg threaded through. That ain't in the rule book. I couldn't find anything about it in the rule book. Well, and therefore, there's not something could, that says it is to if you don't thread either. Yeah, but, I mean, generally speaking, behind the arms and the side headlock. Now, listen, I would personally outlaw this takedown completely. I don't Rick like it. That being said, they're so dumb. But that being said, it is in the rule book, so we have to award it. There's nothing that has to be fully a, full, a fully threaded leg. It, once he drives that leg straight back, like you know, and I don't know how Mug Kemmer's a wizard because I don't know how he got it out from where it was, mm-hmm. um, right? Because Soroki was behind it like this, and then he somehow drove it back, um, which it should not be able to do from that position. Um, that's two points, and there was two seconds left on the clock. Yeah. Now we can't play the video, but we do have like a sequence of screenshots. So this is where. <laughs> From this point, it's like, how does he get out of this? How does he get his yes. foot back? Because he's in a great position. So, so, yeah, where Carter's right arm is, the, it, it's almost impossible for Michael to, to keep the lock and twist his hip in order to generate enough force to drive the foot back. Mm-hmm. So Boom, and then boom, he drives it back, though. He does somehow. So, so do you think it's two right here, Ben, even though Strachi yes. still has that leg? Yeah, I think that's two. I don't know. Strachi still well, has the leg. Okay, think about it. Here, here's what. Here's what. Here's what. Um, I don't want to bully. I don't be a bully here, but I might be a little bit of a bully. Here's what people don't want to acknowledge. Okay, if I have the side headlock, and I am like to 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 the to the side of him, I'm not over or under his leg. Okay. Yes. For the side headlock guy, that is a superior position than the guy's leg being over my leg. So if That's I have a side headlock style, and the guy's leg is over my leg. It's an inferior position. So you're That's telling why in freestyle, me you have to get it out. I understand because it's not a good position. We don't actually want to be there. The only thing to do there you can possibly do is roll through, and that's super sketch. So, like, having that guy's leg over your leg, being out to the side would be better. If you have a side headlock and you're just on the side of them, but, like, right, you're not – it's not like the side, like, 90 degrees. We're talking about, like, I'm behind him. I'm just not over his legs. And there's nothing in, in folk style wrestling that says I'd be over his legs. I can be behind the arms and I, I can be almost who was the match we were with watching earlier this year where they were almost at 90 degrees and people wanted two to be well, called. Jul- Julian was, and uh, Shane Griffith. Yeah, they wanted two there. And it was it was almost a 90 degree. It might have been even greater than 90 degrees, right? Where he was like this and reaching over. Mm-hmm. And so, like, if you're telling me that, you know, if I'm all the way behind, like, a, you know, with a 15 degree angle there, we're, we're nice and tight. That's a superior position. My legs out than whether my legs in. So whether Carter has his foot over or under, I think that it's completely irrelevant. And I did, I did try researching. Now I did, I didn't do it for an hour. I did it for about 12 minutes. Tried to look through the rule book where it specifies exactly what the criteria for the Merkel position That's is. The time I spent looking for it too. So I yeah, just you know here's what, what I, I do. I read through the rule book a couple times, then I, then I search Merkel takedown a couple times. Yeah, and then... I did the same. Yeah. Well, I okay. don't think it's too is that Sirachi has his hands wrapped around Kimmer's leg the entire time. No, he doesn't at the he, not at the end. He doesn't. But at the end, then he has it's... his leg over. But that, but that, I'm telling you, that's irrelevant. That's what he would. Michael would actually be in better position if if the leg was completely gone. Who cares if it's over or under? Mm-hmm. So I mean, yeah. But it's not out or wrapped at that point. If it's out, then I almost think it's two. But it's not out, and it's not wrapped. So if you want to say it's wrapped. The wrapped and leg positioning, I'm saying, is irrelevant. And I can't find anywhere in the rule book that that tells me that it's not. But as a wrestling person, I guess even regardless of what the rule book may say, as a wrestling person, this is better. Where he's at, where you're looking at right now is actually better than the leg wrap. Because now Michael Kemmer, say we actually have time on the clock, He's just gonna bump in, pop his leg out, and I, then he's on top. I agree. If the leg's wrapped, he ain't getting his leg out. I agree, but it's not out. If it was out, I would say two. But it's not out, no. and it's not wrapped. Okay, hold on. Y- y'all are just gonna do this circle for ten minutes. I t- actually talked to a ref about this, who a Big Ten official who gave me his perspective on it, and it's about it's it's sort of a great thing. There's nothing in the book or written in that book for college. Um, 
It has since been accepted via directives from evaluators, assigners, senior officials that the traditional Merkel on the mat and beyond reaction time is considered control. The gray area comes in with the leg of the scoring wrestler, as that is a big piece of this being control. If the defending wrestler is preventing the leg from being through the crotch and over the defending wrestler's leg, the official has to determine if there is enough there to award control. Hope this helps. So it's like, but that's that's where he's he's wrong. There, he is. Listen, I can tell you, he's wrong. You're having the leg the hooked. Wrong. Well, th- that was his interpretation. Well, that's what he's saying. That's, not, that's that's what he's saying. The evaluators are saying the interpretation is correct. And I'm saying the eva- okay evaluators, not the referee, whoever evaluators. Just listen to me right now. Listen to me right now. There's listen very few people the that understand. Rules, sorry. Listen, there's very few people that understand wrestling the way I understand it. And I can feel it. Having the leg hooked actually implies less control than having it not hooked. Having it hooked is worse for you than having it not hooked. Being not hooked leg does not help. It helps you. You can get out easier. Give it, and obviously in freestyle, you don't even get a point for that. In folk style, I would actually like to see the same thing, that if if that leg is hooked, that actually it actually takes away control. It doesn't give you more control. It hurts you. It gives the bottom guy a lot of possibilities at a reversal. UWW so figured good. it out. UW, yeah. So um, that's they're they're completely misinterpreting that. And I don't, you know, I want to be a dick, but a lot of those guys haven't been in those wrestling positions like that for a long time. And especially even from where I was in 2007, wrestling has evolved where a lot of people are pretty tricky back there. When they get that leg hook, I can do a Peterson one way, I can do a Peterson the other way. I can sit my butt down and swim my arm in. Like there's there's quite a few options for me. Yes, yes, indeed. So obviously a controversial position and. One thing that Ben and I both missed watching it live was that Kimmer got hit for stalling in the uh, either late first or second. Oh, he period. did. He did get hit. I went back and watched. He kind of, he kind of deserved it. I don't he, remember seeing that though. And that's the the weird thing. It must have happened in a time where there was like a lot of reason to be looking solely at the action, like on the mat, and you kind of missed the the official. Mm, yeah, but we both missed it sense. for for whatever reason. Um, what Tom Brady just retired. Tom Brady retired. Wow. Oh, for God. I don't give a damn about no Tom Brady. I'm trying to talk about the wrestling. I know, I know, but it's huge news. It's big news. Is he um, good at football? He put it on the gram. Okay. It's official, and it was like a huge thing. Was yeah. he or wasn't he? So. Big J Jernos got it out for him. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so. Sorry. I forget what I was going to say. Um, oh, yeah. So, I mean, the, yeah, stall- so uh, the other, hold on. <clears throat> I guess the other thing, well, hold on. Let's um, <laughs> go back to the Merkel position. The other thing, Christian, is that they, they called it too. With, it, the ref called two and then wiped it off. And that is, that's pretty rare that you see them wipe. I mean, I was complaining a couple weeks ago about how. Well, no. Here, ben, was ben, if you watch it, he called two. He, it was time had well expired when he called the two. That's why he wiped it. Look when he when he holds up two. There's time left. When when he gets in the same position, there's time left. When he holds up two, Ben, there was no time on the clock. That's why it got wiped. I understand, understand understand, but it was they were in the same position the whole time. That's he just he was just late. That is also true. He was late. I thought he was late. I should have said, "Hey, I'm late here. I I missed it. It was two. Yeah. So I thought I thought it was two as well, and um, but they didn't call it. And then so we were so surprised when Kimmer cut him in tiebreakers because we didn't realize he had a uh he had yeah, that stall warning, stall warning. Uh, but it, it makes sense now and then he get, ends up not being able to get away and that was that 84 not a ton to say brooks looked great early and then couldn't really get it going much late and, it, and Assad did his job which was to not get majored which put them in position where if iowa won the last two they likely or they had the chance to win by by criteria but then 97 happens, and ladies' man gets a beautiful reattack and ride out um, and ends up being 3-0 going into the third before he gives up the escape and then gets taken down and then bow and arrow to his back and then ends up losing 8-3. to Ladies' man, he's got to he's figure out how to get in better shape. I, I don't know what the – and, and I, honestly, it's probably not a shape thing. It's probably a – up in his brain thing where he's mm-hmm. exa- mentally exhausting himself due to anxiety of some sort. That would actually probably be my guess. I'd probably guess Jacob Warner works pretty hard, but yeah, he's looked like, so that's, that's three period, three third periods in a row where he's looked uh, very subpar. If they can't get that figured out, man, he's going to have a hard time closing out all those matches because uh, 
Yeah, let's see. The last three. Yep. Gavin, uh, no, sorry. Mikhail Foy was a while ago, and then Gavin Hoffman, Max Dean. Mm-hmm. Those three. Yeah, so not not a good third period. And, I, you know, watching, you're, you're seeing the, the replay. Um, I thought and he, he ruined my call because if he loses by one, I win the picks. And then he freaking gets turned over. It's such Man. a freaking, yes. what the heck? And once again, I, bow and I won the week again. I'm widening the gap every single week. Uh, more. Uh, listen, I got so many excuses, Christian. I got all. You know, was, the, you know who they're on for. the back half of this duel. I went zero for four. I was on killing the back it on half. the front half. Yeah, yes, me I was too. Killing it on the front half. I won four and straight. Then, uh, was feeling hot, and then man, I was Brooks, on fire. I got my heart ripped butt out. Kick it. Brooks, it was five and a half. You won by five. Just get one more takedown. Are you a national champ or not? That's what I'm saying. saying. He comes over the bench. I'm saying, Aaron, don't you know I bet five and a half? Get that last takedown. That's what I'm Let saying. Go. I got Seriously. six out of the nine matches right. That's Bartlett. Bartlett got to get an escape. My I'm man Bartlett in. messed it up big time. My goodness. Hey, what was the? Oh, we knew that. Oh, the, Paris the, lost us. Paris, Paris lost at the buzzer. He got taken down. He was losing by eight. We need to pull up <laughs> my down. reaction because oh, it was a roller coaster. Because I didn't think Gable oh. Gable was gonna he get let it. Him go. Yes. Yeah, and then he got it with like no time. But oh then he, my god! But then that he let him so up. And he annoying. Had the was... Oh, that was so annoying. That was a that was a, a tough third period for for Mason Paris. Um, and then know. he double tapped him really with the on the body bag by putting it on Instagram. Yeah, he grammed it. Um, to tag somebody you would do this to. I tagged Ben Askren. I don't know if you saw that, Ben, but I said. <laughs> I commented. I said murder's not allowed on this app. Yeah, uh, I love I love Gable Stevenson the way he wrestles, and I know uh, it maybe it's it's a little too rough for some people. But listen, you guys you guys you guys don't like hard wrestling because that's hard wrestling. Bunch of yeah. softies out here. You like Iowa hard wrestling, but you don't like Gable Stevens hard wrestling. Get lost, losers. I think, dude. The, oh my goodness. The the fans. Oh to, my goodness. The fans to hater ratio is like out of control. There there more way more people like Gable than yes. than dislike him. There's yeah. two Michigan fans that were Agreed. probably in his mentions. Yeah, I mean it. <laughs> the, the I no. always, I think there's that, there's a bunch of Iowa fans that probably don't like him. Also, they gave him a standing no. They look, what are you talking about? I this is they, yeah, but. People are different on social media. That's, that's true. A, that's yeah. Social media is not real. People think it's real. It's not no, real. No, it, no, it, it's real. It's people. There's people that are Christian. It's not. It's not. <laughs> but it's not real. It. You. Are, no. It's the thing that people. You look. look I experience this significantly more than you guys. They'll be a dick <laughs> to you big time. They're like, Eskin, you're the worst ever. You suck. You can't do nothing. And they'll see you in person. Like, Ben, can I get a picture with you? That's why it's like, not exactly. Exactly. It's not real. It's 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 fake. You just you're just <laughs> illustrating my point perfectly. Um, no, it's just, it's, it's no, it's not fake. It's situational. When people can be behind a phone, it's significantly easier to say something than when you see someone eye to eye. It's different. Uh, it's meaningless. Maybe if that's they're both what I mean. real. No, not real. Um, <laughs> just just gotta trust. No, you just gotta real. trust me. It's not real. Um, uh, people make too many decisions based on social media. Um, I'll say that. Cassiope Kirkley, we didn't even get to it. But let's get to it. It's oh. the last match of the duel. I've, I've held Kirk I've going annoyed. up a body with this man. Twice. Um, twice. Twice. So I he, was pretty confident in him covering the line. I picked him. And then he got that first single with ease. And I double, had right? never felt better double. about a bet in my life. Mm-hmm. And I, I picked him to win the match outright. I picked Cassiope to win. Yes, you did. And... uh when he, thank you. There's my. That was and that's okay. The but I'm gonna, I'm gonna take over. I'm gonna take over here. I, I I had the feeling. You know, I think we were lost in the moment a little bit on Friday night. And then after the match, I said, "Wait, they just they just sat and double thigh pry." And then I went back and watched it. These these two these two were in double thigh pry for a minute and thirty three seconds. A double thigh pry is not a breakdown. A double thigh pry is something you do for like two seconds to get the person's weight onto their hands, at which point you then transition into a breakdown, a chop, spiral, et cetera, right? Hey, they're both making progress from I saw them out of the match. They were in a double thigh pry situation. Listen, he didn't take his hands out of the crotch. Go watch it. Cassiope's got his hands in the crotch. Just keeping them warm? I don't think – It's cold in Iowa. Because 
It's not like Kirkfield was doing anymore. Kirkfield was just sitting there, I don't know, accepting defeat. I don't know what he was doing. But it, Kale should be saying, Greg, Greg, if, if you want to be good at this, you cannot be getting ridden with a double tie. That's just unacceptable. That's just something I would not let another man do to me. It's yeah. not going to happen. It was it was bizarre to watch. I mean, in the moment, we're like, he's just not moving. He's like not moving. And yeah. Cassiope, not that Cassiope was attempting any sort of turn, but until you get hit for stalling from that position, I guess just hang out there if the guy's not going to move. Just keep your hands in his crotch. Yeah. But the, the weird <laughs> thing was, first takedown for Kirkfleet, and I can see JD's conclusion there like, Oh man, this it looks like that was so easy. And then it's gonna be Mason yeah. two point But then he he just made the adjustments and was able to like pull him up into that position twice. And I listen, Cassiope's obviously really good upper body and strong there that tie, but it would seem like Kirkfleet would have been able to just at least just get your hips back and stalemate that position or give that's, but Well that's what I said that's why I said to you and then I watched him and I said in those clips is like Cassiope is, is is improving this position for he's working in here, right? Mm-hmm. But but Greg goes for it. He mm-hmm. does. He goes for it in both situations. And the second one was even maybe even earlier. Whereas to your point, you could put your hands on the hips, slide your shoulder in, stick your ass back a little bit, and back that Cassiope thing is going to very <laughs> juvenile. Yes. That, oh my god! Back that cast up. <laughs> back that cast up. <laughs> no, the other way. Greg's supposed to back it up. Oh, back that Greg Greg's up. supposed to put his hands on the hips, back his hips up. And, um, you know, because then you're obviously – he's winning at that point, so obviously he's going to maybe then force Cassiope to do something stupid. He's a big, fine right? wrestler. You know, you got to back that thing up. Oh, my – oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. So, man, but can you imagine – imagine the scenario where Big Tone Wait, is – Wait, so what's the – hold on, Christian. What's the rules here? Because I'm watching this – uh on Instagram. If it's on Instagram, we can play it, but if it's on YouTube, we can't? I don't know. Why are you snitching, bro? Can we just pull up clips without the... <laughs> I don't know. put it on their social media. We're just up. showing a social if media we... post. Listen, if that. we can pull this clip up, why can't we pull all the clips up? Because I want to go pull the we camera can't pull clips the stream. Yeah, if you pull the stream, that, that does feel... Uh... No, it's, it's selected matches. You know, selected matches. Everyone steals from us, selected but it... matches. Yeah. Um, okay, fine. Jeez. Fine. Sorry, dude. Okay. So that was Iowa Penn State. After the duel, neither coach seemed super pumped about how their teams wrestled. Um, Kale said Kale yeah. kind of alluded to training through it. No, he didn't. He said well he said that what my guys said? were off and that's something on the training. He said they were tired. They came out without much energy. Oh, I And he said that's on me, that's on their training. Oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa. Well, that doesn't mean they no. I don't think that's I think you're looking too many steps deeper. I think he's not saying we trained through this match. I think he's saying, okay, we didn't do the the periodization correctly. Okay. But maybe that's what, I, yeah. They're not training through the Iowa duel, but there maybe was something in the training that had them coming out. I guess that's what good. I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't. I, I don't. didn't mean they were doing 90-minute live goes the day before. Well, it would be nicer if Kale just was spelled it out for us. But uh, they've never went over 90 minutes, according to Bo Nickel and David Taylor. So <laughs> they they may be lying. We're not sure at this point. We'll never know. Um, we'll never know. You'll never, you'll never infiltrate. Them. I'm going to so, listen. I'm going to infiltrate. I have a spy. I already know which spy is going to infiltrate for me. Uh, <clears throat> I have one half spy in there, although he doesn't give me good answers uh, ever. He's but been I'm indoctrinated. Put gonna... I know that spy you're referring to. He's he's already drinking with Kool Aid. He was, call, he was calling. Put, he was he calling. He was calling for a. He was calling for a ten zero. He's like, he comes up to us and he says, Ben Spy says they're going to win ten ah, matches ah, in this duel against he's Iowa. Thinking, what's so, he thinking? So you think he's going to oh give gosh. it up to you? No way. No, listen. I, I he you know I get a little bit a little bit of juice from him. Not much. I'm going to get another spy in there that's going to give me all the answers, all the kale secrets. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, Just wait. Okay. So good duel. Very fun. Um, at, man, for, for Penn State, uh, there's no relenting in this schedule. They have Iowa, oh, excuse me, Ohio State and Nebraska this weekend. Ooh, wow. That's, that's, uh, they that's a tough little stretch. That's no joke. Uh, and so Iowa Iowa's has got Wisconsin. Wisconsin, who's been wrestling pretty well. And then they have Oklahoma State. So. Hamini, bull, baby. Yep. You know, we're going to find out if Hamini's the real deal this weekend. He's the real deal. I'm not saying he's beaten bull, but he is. He is real, and it's so funny. He pinned Gavin Bell. Um, he is we, not on Facebook. 
he is real. <laughs> That's Not on it. social media. Exactly right. Exactly right. Real person, <laughs> Dean Hamidi. <laughs> Can't wait for that match. Um, 25 would have been really fun if Drake, but uh, we had some yes, we had some questions about Drake's his availability. He I we can listen to what Brand said. Oh, it's not much. He didn't say anything. I mean, really. Um, we can, yeah, let's play it. What is the status of the Yale? And when was he ruled out? Uh, it doesn't really matter. The status of him is is he's ready to go when he's ready to go. Um, medical oh. and coaches, and more importantly, Drake. Um, Ayala will be the one that makes that call. So, love, love him in our program. Tell you that. We love him in our program, and we know that, um, you know, our yeah, that's pretty much it. team's good with him in there. So, what does, what does him loving them in his program have anything to do with the injury? Well, this, not, this is shenanigans. T- listen. He doesn't give a crap what I know. you think about so it. Say, he's not going to tell you his injury. He's not going to tell you his availability. He's not going to tell you when he's going to be back. Okay, so just say, I'm not going to tell you. Just say that. How about that? Not say freaking. He basically did. My favorite was it doesn't really matter. Program. matter what his status is. Yeah, it doesn't matter. He what got rocked. <laughs> like the rock. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I think. That would be funny. I'd love that. that yeah, I don't understand why <laughs> why you get surprised when this happens. Like coaches, this is just what no, they no, do. No, no, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like when when they continue on, like I would, I would love it to be more direct. Point. I'm just not going to tell you, or it doesn't matter what his status is, and then just be done with it. Don't like why why are you going on about we love him in the program? Like okay, cool, but that that wasn't the question. That wasn't the question. The question was not do you like Drake Ayala in your in your uh, program. That wasn't the question. The, nowhere in that question was that question posed. Yeah. So for Drake, the the <laughs> word is Big Tens is probably when we'll see him if we see him. Uh, I think one one thing is to consider, and I don't think it's possible, but could he get could he get a medical? Um, and so if he's matches. if he, no, he's got a lot of matches, I think I think all of them anymore with the medicals, it's they're pretty liberal with them. So if it's something where he can't be get back right, he has, he's got seventeen matches, Christian. That's a 17, lot. Seventeen, but most of those were in red shirt. So isn't it like a Logan Steber situation? Logan was done. Well, after Logan only Vegas. had one tournament. Yeah, it was one tournament. Yeah, like five matches or six matches. <sighs> yeah, he might have wrestled in a duel or something. But yeah, he he was done after CKLV. So this would be way. Yeah. I mean, he this guy wrestled in Jan- a couple of duels in January. They had six matches at the scuffle and then six duels, I think. Or six matches in the scuffle, six, five duels, and then two other opens. Yeah. So you got to weigh how much does a maybe not 100% Jake Ayala help you at NCAs versus the possibility of him getting a medical. Yeah. Because if you don't roll him out there, like you're leaving the possibility of a lot of points on the yeah, table. Yeah, I'd say, you know, probably 10. It, yeah. Bar is not getting any points. No, he's. I don't think he's a qualifier. Um, yeah. So yeah, I don't know if we'll. I would imagine he'll give it a shot at come back. <laughs> Bless you, Ben. Sorry, big sneeze, big sneeze. S- sneezy Ben, ask. Oh, I need a freaking Kleenex. I got nothing. It's wiping on my yeah. pants. Text Ozzy. <laughs> uh, he's at grandma's right now. He's at grandma's. All right. Just yeah. Just destroy him the and house. Luca. They're pretty, they're pretty funny. I don't know Luca. That's Max's kid. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. so that was Iowa Penn State. I think we did it. Good, good times there. Yeah. Where do we want to go next? Uh, where do we want to go next? Uh, we already talked I, about my Oklahoma triumphs. State, Northern Iowa, that one. Yeah. So, so f- more than a couple upsets here in, in Oklahoma State, you and I. Um, the biggest one, pro was probably Yant beating Travis Whitlake, who we saw for the first time in a while, I believe. We hadn't seen Travis. He'd been off the mat. And, you know, so so how much is, okay, Yant, Yant's pretty good. How much is, okay, we haven't seen Whitlake in a while, and Yant was able to challenge her. I mean, the ride out in the third was sort of surprising to see Yant do that. Um, but for me, the biggest Surprised the biggest moment was was Runyon pinning Dustin Plot in uh yeah. in a cradle. Dustin was winning. He shoots a single leg. Um Runyon kind of lock, locks around the crotch and just does like the Sammy Sasso, the Jay Jaggers cradle thing, just 
slowly works his way mm-hmm. over and plot really. So, yeah, go ahead, Ben. Just to be just to define it, Jaggers mostly did it from a head outside. Sasso or the trail is mostly head inside. This is head inside. Just, sorry. I saw Jaggers do a bunch from head inside. I think NCAs in 2009. Was, I thought. No, mostly head outside for sure. All right, I'll go watch it. I'll go watch it again. Okay. Um, I'm sure you're probably right, but I just remember it differently. Um, I think it was one inside, but mostly at outside. Got it. Got it. So yeah. the plot gets pinned there, and that that was obviously had a huge impact on the duel. Um, I'm actually. And you, you said you said this in the text. It was shocking. There was almost no reaction from uh, Dustin Plot. Like he was sitting on his knees, and then it wasn't like Runyon locked it up in a second. It took him. I don't know, twelve seconds. It took it took a while, right? To to wiggle in there the right way, get get the positioning correctly, and there was just no reaction from plot. That was really strange. Yeah, I it. I don't know if it was. There's no way he hasn't felt that position, right? I mean, it's super weird. It's yeah. it's a pretty common I, defensive counter to you know lock there. Do you just call that locking around the crotch? So what do you call that We called the. Trello position. Trello so you actually don't want to be in the you don't want to be in the crotch. You actually want to be as far away from the crotch as possible. Okay. Um, slide down the leg, slide up the chest, not not close to the crotch. Okay. Um, that 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 allows us to have the best body cradle and then crunch them. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, I knew the result. I knew the result of the match going into it. So then when I saw this happen, okay, well, he's going to clearly pin him from here because I already know what the result is. But then it's like it's not like it happens quickly. It like kind of takes a while to develop. And yeah, usually guys straight and drive their legs straight. They go down to their hip. They do they do something besides just sit there. That was weird. Yeah, I thought it was strange for sure. Uh, and then yeah. Parker Keckheisen goes beast mode uh, against Dakota yes, Gear. Did. Tough weekend for Gear, who lost to Marcus Coleman as well. Who's looked Marcus Coleman's looked really good this year. Marcus Coleman's having a great season. I think has he only lost to Parker. I think that might be his only loss. That could be right. And Parker, Parker looks like a beast, man. He he's that's a super impressive guy. He could be the be- second yep. best eighty four for sure. Congrats to me on you on getting that right, Ben. Oh, what did you get right? What's up? Yeah, did I miss something? I think you, yeah, you picked gear to cover. You that one. Oh, I did. Yeah, um, I was close. Nope. Yeah, Par- <laughs> Parker is uh, Parker is Coleman's only loss on the year. So Coleman's having a really solid season. Yes. So Parker for Ames natives and um, Parker was so good in the scrambles too, um, which not, not terribly surprising, but gear is, is one of the better scramblers on Oklahoma state. And even still Parker was, you know, had, had an advantage in that area. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, the, the, in the second period, he hits the, the far ankle kickoff twice. And I can so we, we were texting about this this morning and, um, so not to repeat myself to you, but obviously we have a few people listening, so I'll repeat to them. It's like I was completely shocked how Gear had no reaction. I mean, maybe if he could beat the first time on it, oh, well, I got surprised. But then when the when it happens the second time, and it's the, it's literally the, the exact same move, to not have another attempt at something was that was also kind of like wow, come on, dude, you got you got to do something here. Whether turn the other hip down, try to turn to the head, like you know, there's a few things you can attempt to do. Uh, when they go there but that was that was kind of shocking yeah yeah i was i was surprised some of the other more notable upsets uh stevan Micic falls to uh berglund of minnesota who berglund he's been solid this year he beat um carter young some other guys um but it was an early takedown and really i thought stevan was he was if you watch the match i thought he was pretty close to getting the, the backers he needed to to win it. He gets a he's really good at going from the takedown to the bottom leg Turk to get it. And he just he had Berglund in position, in position, but couldn't quite put him over and he ended up losing the match. Um but I think it is time for some real alarm with Stevan and just wondering if he's gonna be able to you know, with he was a bona fide title contender to start the year in all our minds. And now it seems pretty Absolutely it's tough to it's tough to see that at this point yes. because I think it's a little bit I think it's a lot of things that are not going to be able to be changed. I think he's probably not a full size forty one. Um, I think that's you can't change that between now and March. I think yeah. he's had a, basically a two year 
layoff from folk style, which I think you're seeing that rear itself with the bottom position. He has a hard time getting off sometimes. Yep. And so yep. I think with the, with the I don't see how you really make that up in, in a couple months. I hope it happens. I want to see. I'm so happy for all these guys that came back. I think it's great. I think they came back for a kind of a bigger cause for the team. I think that's cool. You know, it's, it's happened around the country, but it happened a lot in Michigan. So I want to see that be rewarded. Um, but it's tough to see it right now. Yeah. You just got to be um, you got to be beating the Cole Matthews and the Jake Berglunds if you're going to be a, uh, a yeah. high AA, right? Even an All-American. Even yeah. even an All-American, period. For sure. I don't think you're picking Cole Matthews and Jake Berglund to All-American at this point in time. Not currently, no. Um, they, so, they, they, outside and then, shots, yeah. Yeah, they had they had Brucky lost to Jerron Smith, which is not a good loss. Jerron Smith was he was two and eight last year. He's he's a little better this year. He's he's fifteen and seven. Um so that's you know that that's a tough one to take too. Yes. Um Soriano dominated uh Pat McKee, and it wasn't so the way Ben thought this could get ugly wasn't exactly how it how it transpired, right? We thought McKee make a big mistake and go down. He just kind of got picked apart from neutral leg attacks from from Soriano. Yeah, and um, it was he looked like a different wrestler. He looked he looked completely different. Um, he he really did. I don't know if it was cut related or if it was Hildebrandt shutting him down, him respecting Kale and Hildebrandt more and yeah, choosing could... not to attack or. Because, like, McKee, it wasn't like McKee was constantly shooting. He was going on reattacks. Soriano went out there and attacked him and took him down. Yeah, he did. And so there's always the, and Ben's been bringing this up consistently, you know, with McKee, there's always a, well, what McKee really was it in this match. And I don't really know. I I tend to give credit, just to give credit to Soriano. That's where I'm kind of leaning, but I don't know. Yeah, I mean... (laughs) You can have all kinds of different uh, uh, Pat McKee show up. So, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to put much weight into that, I'll say, because he, he kind of goes all the place. And, and you guys obviously put too much weight into it, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mastro comes down. You're welcome, Ben. Yeah. Yeah, it Wait, why, uh, he, But he lost. He lost to Terraquina. Yeah, so, that's, hey, why, he that's, that's why he That's why he drops. I will say the Brody Teske match, I did not think Brody Teske had a takedown in the first period. I thought that was called much, much too quickly. Um, and then in overtime, I actually thought I actually thought that uh, Mastro held him there long enough to get two. I mean, it was kind of like, oh, does he really have control? But then he was there for like, I don't know, three or four. You guys know what I'm talking about? Like in that oh, like, yeah. headlock. It's like a headlock. He was but there for weird, like weird four sort of seconds. It. it was such a but weird. he was there I, for his oh, Kind of a long time. I'm kind of with you. I thought the two was coming. And when I saw a brick, I assumed it was Oklahoma State's, but it, it was Schwab's brick when he was kind of behind with the leg in sort of scenario before not that. Too. That's not. Yeah, I don't like that. Sometimes you'll see them call like a weird thing where they're like so low under the guy. It's like, no, that's that yeah, shouldn't be two. But, I don't like yeah, I, th- I thought the headlock could have definitely been called two, but ultimately <clears throat> Mastro got it. But then he loses to Terrakina. Who's having? He was undefeated, and then he lost to Joey Prada. So it's kind of it's all the over next the day. I don't know if it was the next day or if he lost to him. The I mean, he must have lost it's to him fr- Friday, 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 the day Sunday. before. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. he had lost to Terrakina, but he was undefeated otherwise. The Terrakina. Let's see. Does Terrakina have other, any other good wins? Cronin's a decent win, and besides mm-hmm. that, uh, not not really anyone. He lost. Oh, yeah, Joey Prada lost, and Master win. Yes. Interesting. David Carr continues Teske to look lost super to, awesome. Did Teske lose to both, or did he beat Prada? Uh, I don't know. Oh, they didn't. They didn't wrestle Teske. They wrestled Goldhofer on on that day. Yeah, and they, Northern Iowa looked good. I think like coming into the year, like there was a lot of those Northern Iowa guys that we maybe weren't thinking very highly of that are now working their way higher into the rankings. Um, and they're kind of putting mm-hmm. together a pretty solid team. They're not, you know, not not a top ten team, but who knows? They keep moving up. I guess maybe it's possible. Yeah, they need obviously high placement from Parker, and then some other guys to slip onto the podium. But they're coming yes. for sure. Uh, 
Schwab Mob yeah. and company doing a great job. Dude, they put the stat up. I couldn't believe it. I felt so – I don't know if I felt old or what. He's been at UNI for 12 years. What the Dang, heck? Dang, you're is old, it, Christian. Wait, that, really? 12 years? It said that on the thing. Is that even true? He Doug Schwab, spent Holland what year in UNI? Virginia Tech? I can't Wait, remember the, what year. Well, no, it was. he was in Iowa. 2008, he was in Iowa in 2008 because he wrestled the Olympic team. You know, yeah, it doesn't seem that would just be the net. I mean, the next year he would have been at. Sounds about right. Let's look. I'm gonna check this out. It said I, that on I the ESPN guessed, broadcast. Like, 11 to 13 is what I would have guessed. So, <clears> um, dude, 2010, dude. 11 was his first season as head coach. Wow. So this is 12 it. years. That is insane. We are old. We're old people, Ben. That was you and I's first win in Stillwater. Ever. Wow. Geez. They've kind of they've Ever. kind of done well against Oklahoma State, didn't they? I was them? there in twenty I can't remember if it was twenty nineteen or twenty. I think it was twenty twenty. It was that season, but I can't remember if it was like November yeah. or if it was January or February that they beat him in McLeod. That was insane. That was a great duel. Um so he's beaten Oklahoma State. I mean that's that's a it's not in Stillwater. That's a feather in your cap. And then you beat them in Stillwater. It's it's big time. Okay. Mm-hmm. So good job, Schwab Mob. Tough, but still, you know, you got to balance it. It's a tough week for Oklahoma State. We'll see how they respond. Oklahoma State's got Missouri Sunday. They have South Dakota State Friday. So there's no, there's no let up. This January, February, there's a lot of tough duels for almost all these teams. Maybe. You yes. got to love it, right? You got to love it. We got well, probably two weeks left of tough duels, and then usually there's a week or two off prior to conferences. Right. Something to that effect. Right. That's good because we can go to yeah. – we got, we got the U State tournament that week. So we got to oh, get them ready. In Texas? Oh, yeah. Rookie States, yeah. bro. People are – Wisconsin doesn't do it till late March, and it's always super annoying because always, 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 always either regionals or state falls on NCAA's weekend. So it's just not ideal at all. Yeah, that's not good. Super, what, are you going to NCAAs? Annoying. I haven't decided still. What the heck is wrong with you? <laughs> what are you waiting I'm for, considering. Jabroni? I'm considering. Uh, hey, let's go to questions. Oh, he's got something going on. He's being sneaky. I have, nothing, I have no. nothing going on. I just haven't decided if I'm going or not. That's literally it. No, there's some there's some sneak going on here. There's, well, there's nothing sneaky going on at all. Was, here, I'll just I mean I'll tell you straight up, I was gonna be gone a lot. Now that my uh, stem cell treatment has been taken off the board because Columbia was demanding uh, a vaccine passport. Um, now I don't feel as guilty leaving again because you know I would have been gone seven days there, and then in April I'll, I go to uh, we got Folkstyle Nationals. Oh, I got, I'm going to conference weekend with you guys. I got the Bitcoin convention in April also, which is going to be tremendous. I got the U.S. Open in April. Is it going to be tremendous? Right? So I'm just... It sounds like a funeral. What? The we Bitcoin had a great con- time. Oh my Man, we're gosh. changing the world, baby. Remember when we we're had so much more money? We're not, con- we're not, we're not convinced of our. Uh, we're not concerned about short-term price action. We're oh, worried about boy. changing the world, piles. Okay. okay. Greatest money ever made. Diamond. Yeah, he knows diamond hands. We yeah, all got we'll little see. lettuce hands falling apart. Even Portnoy's got lettuce. Portnoy just bought twenty-nine Bitcoin. He's starting to get a little stronger hands. Wow. This this guy he had lettuce hands. He bought at. He bought it 10, and then it went up to, I don't know, 14 or something, and then went back down to 11, and he sold a whole bunch. Smart. Like, what a chicken. He should just ha- Smart! Smart! <laughs> he sold a $1,000 Bitcoin. What an idiot, Chris. An idiot. He's not Sa- smart. Save yourself the trouble, I say. Um, you should come to Austin and see all the uh, crypto uh, billboards. They're kind of taking over. There's some yeah. lot. Yeah, Austin, Austin, and slash Texas is kind of becoming. Uh, they're kind of battling with Miami to be the crypto Bitcoin hubs. Um, New York, Texas has a lot of. Yeah, New York. Many... Not, they're not going to make it. New York, next to me. Texas has a ton of Bitcoin <laughs> mining facilities going York. in, and all of the politicians are like um, really pumped about the what the mining can bring and, and securing the energy grid in Texas. So Miami doesn't have that, but Miami's mayor is trying very hard to. Uh, entice a bunch of companies to come in. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That was biz hour. Mm-hmm. That was that was talking biz. Do you have? Do you own any uh, um, twenty thousand dollar gorilla cartoons? Do you have any of those? I don't. Lo- I don't. I don't love NFTs. I don't. I don't actually, I don't really like them that much. So no, yeah, I'm not a. It's, I'm not it a, is. But the board is like those guys are making money though. Yeah. It. 
it's the biggest. It's a scam. I don't like it's a it. scam. You got to be listen. I, there's a lot of suckers yes. I think falling for it, and you know, like they probably probably 20 years ago these people would have had a lot of beanie babies, but now they're buying gorilla cartoons, and it's like, what are you doing? Kanye West doesn't like in, NFTs. That man knows. Okay, Euregan happened. Um, we had three champions. Emma Brontel was the surprise champion, knocking off with the upset win over Force Molinari. Um, so that was huge for her, Helen Maroulis. And then Kyle Snyder now has more Euregan championships than Sajulayev. Is he better? Is he better? He is better in Siberia, that's for sure. Yeah, it's kind of surprising that, that Sajulayev almost never wrestles at the Euregan. Yeah. Is it that surprising? In the one year, it's not that surprising. He's been <laughs> like this. He's literally been like this since 2014. Like, he's hard to find. Um, but he, you actually, you can always find him every year at Worlds or Olympics, and he's in the finals. Uh, but other than that, he's, he's a little difficult to find. But his methods clearly are are uh, effective. Jason Nolf took silver. The one year, Sajulayev went to Uregan. And Snyder, I'm pretty sure, was there, and he went 92 when Snyder went 97. That was, Those years he was coming up from 86. It was no. tw- it was 2018 when he had already won. Uh, he was silver at yeah. He was he was avoiding Kyle Snyder at that point in time, but then he beat him at Worlds. So, uh, Zahid Valencia bronze, Forrest got silver, of course, and then Macy Kilty silver. So did you see the latch up um, no hit on Bazoev? No. Yes. It was amazing. Yes. I, I sent it to Tyler. Tyler can pull it up. Oh, no. Who is that? Someone just walked in. Oh, boy. Oh, Sion! Yeah. It's Sion! Oh, no. Yeah! <laughs> he said, he, to Sion uh, says his music. If he has music, I didn't. Tyler, hit my entrance music. Oh, no. He's sitting down at the back table. I don't even know if. Is there even a headset back there? <laughs> or a camera. Does Tyler know this is happening? I'm sorry, Tyler. This is un- <laughs> unapproved. JD normally locks the door. He deadbolts it. That's not true. I encourage Sion. Um, You're the locker. I don't. Yeah, I need the. I need the lock. You know, I need to get hit Melissa up for the, for the key. So, so I uh, Sion's here. I'm not sure what he wants to talk about. Um, do you have Sion? Do you have oh, Sion's into NFTs, Ben? <laughs> Aren't you? Oh God. Well, uh, Sion, Sion collects uh, comic books, doesn't he? Yeah, at least those are real. NFTs are real. It's a digital world. Okay, here we go, Mr. Digital, digital World. world. Um, okay. Wait, we got him a microphone? Put him on camera. I have I no idea. I have no morning. idea. The camera just, might not be on. I don't think that camera's on. I don't. Oh, look, he's turning it around. Look at this. The handheld. There's, a, there's another mic. Oh, my gosh. There he is. <laughs> there you go. Oh, my you, gosh. You got my music, Tyler, going? Wait, test, test out my new theme music. <laughs> I'm not sure if, if Tyler has it ready or had it on hand. Sion, you're 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 dismantling the show. Have you? There's no music playing. We're gonna continue to do the All show. Right. Um, do we want to? Any other thoughts on on your Egan? We sent a pretty big team. We got a couple, We got three golds. Is there anything else to say? Um. Okay. Then we'll keep it moving. <laughs> ben Ben does not want to talk about your Egan. Team Iran is bringing their ones. They have a really good team coming to uh, the ballot at the ballpark, which is rapidly approaching. It is literally next week. And uh, Yazdani is going to be there. We're going to have uh, Gassimpour, Golej, Zare is going to be there. And we're, we're bringing Gwiz. Is that established? Has that been announced? No. Okay. We don't know who's going for <laughs> Team USA at heavyweight. It's uh, definitely the short straw if you have to wrestle Zare, unless you're Gable. Because he is just going to... Gable, let's do it, baby. I, He's I looking hope... so good. Put him in. He looks so good. So wh- why isn't Gable wrestling? Um, Because... We don't know. the upside for him. Yeah, he's the Olympic champion. Why go? Why take a match you can lose? Um, he went out on top. There. Yeah. It's mostly downside. Talking about he's young in his career. He can only... He, he can only the end of his career. Man, he's 21 years old. That's not the end of a career. That man could still achieve another two Olympic gold medals. Well, yeah, he could. You know? He could, but he's he, not going he to. He doesn't want to. Okay, you're right. He's flying away the champ. Yeah, he's just gonna. This is just a. This NCAA season is just a big victory tour for. Yeah, for, he's smart. This is what I would do. Yeah. Why he's, stick around and lose when you can just? Be I mean, forever. 
the what if the one, best. One thing that I was curious about after he won the Olympics is like, okay, is he how into wrestling is he still going to be? Yeah, he's going to come back and he could still probably just win. But he's as good as we've ever seen him right now. Well, he, he's I, getting I would better. Say, I would say he's better than we've ever seen him because now he's just making. I would say there's a man among boys, but it's like a man among toddlers right now. Yeah, he looks really good. Um, Did you see his uh, tweet? It's tremendous. I love Gable. And if any other heavyweight want to talk that talk, I'm pulling up on you the same way I just did a couple days ago. Matter of fact, I'm coming that way regardless. I want to dominate. I'm not changing a thing. Believe that. Yeah. Love it. Creating some excitement, some, uh, you know, uh, basically some shit talking, get wrestling exciting. Yeah, it, it's like a Mike Tyson fight, like where he's become must watch TV despite the fact that you know he's going to dominate. Yeah. I mean, the way he, I mean, but, it was, he was up two in the third period against Mason Paris and he majored him because he gave up, he gave up a penalty point at the, at the edge. I'm pretty sure he's up two going into the third. And but he, he still, tries, but he tries so hard. I mean, that's so hard. Yeah, that, 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 this is what I was saying in my tweet. And this is why I get so annoyed where, and I, Kirsten, I know it's not a lot of people. I know it's a, I know it's a smaller percentage, but yes, there are people who are complaining and bitching about Gable Stevenson. Yeah, you know what I'm mean, saying. So he he's he's hard wrestling. He wants to win by as, as many points as possible all times. There is nothing more as a wrestling fan. There is nothing more you should love about someone who wants to win by as many points as possible all the time. So it's what, freaking what, what, what awesome. There's nothing about, else to say. What are they complaining about, Ben? I guess I I don't I don't go on Twitter and all that. Oh, he he's cocky and arrogant and he showboats and all all these other really? shenanigans. I yes. don't know. I, I you know. Chris says they're that, fake people. Iowa does that oh, all, the, all the time. You know, Iowa does that all the time. You know, they show Iowa people wishes around they had someone who wrestled as hard as Gable Stevenson. Well, in the past, they used to do that. I ain't saying they're doing it right now. In the past, they used to do that all the time, and everybody used to love it. So, Gable Stevenson. Also, everyone used to hate it. They were def they're definitely and still are the most hated team in college wrestling. So, there was definitely two sides to that coin when Iowa. Yeah, that's was very true. Um, so, yeah, obviously, Iowa fans loved it, but basically. They totally alienated themselves and, you know, made Come on, it. Chris. You still love Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> no, my son sure does. That's for sure. You know, the, uh, they say the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. Yeah, they do say that. So he's got to get it from somewhere. Well, this, yeah, th unfortunately, the, the secret's out. He's, like, not like me at all. He's way smarter than me, so... Um, well, there's not I, there's not as many similarities. A lot, a, a lot of people are pretty smarter than you. I'm not. I know. <laughs> I know this. Listen, that, this is acknowledged uh, by me, especially. So yeah, I think I I love what Gable's. What is crazy about Gable is you would have thought fast starter and then you know sort of sort of he what he's doing in the third periods of these matches killing I mean, people. He is killing. He's burying them. It's it is like an Iowa style third period. He's melting these guys. That's a difference yes. from that past. Is different. He had he used yes. to slow down. That's a what decent I, amount in the third. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like him continuing to evolve when really like you won the Olympics and this is just you're just doing the victory tour. He is putting in. I think the it's a, work. It's a he's putting yeah. in the work. Yes, but it's also like a swagger thing. Like before, obviously he knew he was better, but now it's like. What what can't it's not as me. but it, it's a, it's over above a swagger thing because a swagger thing yeah you do some fancy moves you look better than someone and then you do get tired in the third period yeah and this is this is past swagger this is like I'm gonna freaking kick your ass as bad as I want to and yeah, I'm not gonna I'm stop why are you on the same mat as me you don't deserve to be you on this mat yeah. and you know what I think part of it is now that part of it is his opponents are just so much more like in their own head about it. how great it's like it's one thing. To you know, this is a great college wrestler, and there's great college wrestlers every single year. And then he does what he does that makes the team in the Olympics, and you're like, oh my gosh, I am so just beyond screwed. And then it's almost like it's in your head that it's going to just go badly. And then it's that self fulfilling prophecy as it starts to unravel, and he's amazing, and it's everything spirals in the like. I don't the think Gable way. has gotten technically that much better since last college season. Yeah, a, a little bit, yes, but. Not that no, much, but, but the like the mentality and like now, yes. just knowing I'm mm -hmm. a hundred times better than you well, and I'm gonna show it. He's well, changed it's his whole page it's to the next level. It's, yeah, took, well, it's just, go ahead, Sian. I'm about to say he took his pace to the next level. You know, sometimes, like you said, he used to he used to coast in the second and third. He was winning comfortably, yeah. um, but now he's like, 
hey, if I'm gonna be the greatest, I gotta look the greatest, yeah. you know. So he's yeah. he's he's as they used to say, he's walking the walk and talking the talk. Yeah. Yeah, I love and it. so it's just for, from a technical standpoint, yes, I wouldn't say there's my, many improvements, but it's just a strategical strategical attack for not only the entire seven minutes of pace, but also just the way he's hand fighting and pressuring. And because we talk about him being the greatest reattacker, and he's so good. And so how do you get guys to attack more? You put pressure on them. And then if you put pressure on them and, and they don't attack, then they look like they're stalling. Right? And so then you're also, from an efficiency standpoint, you're also making them more tired. And this is like where I was talking about the RBY and DeSanto, when you go under someone for an efficiency, stand, efficiency standpoint, you're actually working harder, right? The gravity is working against you. They're sprawling. You're you're pulling. Mm-hmm. You're working really hard. And so in a seven-minute match, if you spend two and a half, three minutes underneath someone, right, that's a significant amount of time that you're spending working way harder than them. If you're hand fighting them and you know how to hand fight well, that's going to make them work harder um, and, and look worse. Yeah, I think one thing that always – just makes me like so impressed with Gable is his ability to go from the leg to skying the foot in the air or just getting to a perfect finishing position almost yes. every attack without fail. Like I yep. the I mean when you think about heavyweight leg attack finishers, one, I thought Gwiz was one of the best. And then he is in a sort of different way. He's really good, but what Gable does, how he's able to finish so efficiently and quickly under the big guys or how he can pull the foot up is He's just he's defies explanation in a lot of ways. Yeah. So the next big question is when do you think he's do you think he's gonna make his WWE debut at WrestleMania? Because that's right after NCAA. Well, when is WrestleMania? I don't even know. Isn't that like April? So right after NCAA's. I'm not sure. Yeah. Google it. WrestleMania. Well, I know, and I would not know this otherwise, but my buddy Hollywood Mike was at uh Royal Rumble. Oh, it's in this Texas. Weekend. Yeah, so is he gonna make his uh, WWE day? That main would be event, awesome. You know, debut. I don't know what main event right away, but no yeah, way. That'd be, tremendous. that'd be crazy if they were using them in April. I think it'd probably be a while. But I mean, it's not a real sport, so maybe. Just 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 stop. Stop. Hey, hey, CP, why don't you go? I dare you go out there and tell them guys it's not a real sport. Yeah, I dare you. <laughs> yeah, I will tell. <laughs> who got I'm literally up? telling who got everyone up for telling them it was fake. I, I, go tell them that up? to his face. Uh, let's see. I mean, it's not. It's not it's, listen, it they have more in common with 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 Pee Wee Herman than you know. That it's just, these are thespians. Uh, it's acting. It's performative. Day. I'm not saying it's easy. They're, you're you're confused. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying uh, I would want to. Do John Stossel. John Stossel got beat up. Is that the guy? Didn't he sue them also? Yeah, during an interview, Stossel told Schultz he thought pro wrestling was fake. And Is that when he slapped Schultz's him in the ear? response ear? was to hit him in the head twice, knock him to the floor each time. Listen, Stossel filed a lawsuit against me, damn it. WWF and settled out of court for $280,000. I'm like, and Tyler, can we play this video? And, we got to be able to play this. That's, I, saw, I saw that documentary, yeah. Hold on. Who is that? That's not Dave how Schultz. I, how do I send this to Kyle? <laughs> how he slapped him. This is going to be you on the ground, CP. Tyler, how do I send this doc to you? Oh, oh my I, gosh. This is too funny. VMAX, uh, VMAX. Okay, I'm going to VMAX. Where do I send it on VMAX? Oh, you're already, you're already there. <laughs> so this is you on the ground, CP. That's yeah. you. You just slapped. Yeah, oh, that's... Just... Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, you got oh, bodied. <laughs> oh, CP, you just got bodied. That's, that's, that that's, a, that's, a, that's a cave person. That's an idiot. Yeah, so, yeah. Yes, so, you can... So, CP, just... I'd like to see you go up to one of them oh, guys and tell them that, and then, uh, you know... Oh, well, what? I mean, it's obvious. I mean, if they try to say it's a oh, sport, man. then they're, they're just lying. Why well, I, well, I don't have to convince them? I know the, wait, the reality. Wait, wait. You pick the winners. That's not real. It's like, I'm not saying, listen, here's what I'm not saying. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying I could do it. I'm not saying any of that, but it's not a sport. There, you can't, you don't pick the winners in a sport. You don't, chore, there's no choreography in sports. There's choreography in like. Wait, 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 wait. Are you saying rhythmic gymnastics and uh, synchronized semi? There's choreography oh. in there. There's Gym- gymnastics. Actually, uh, gymnastics. Uh, come on, man. Hey, CP, take your foot out your mouth. I, <laughs> where, where I define, no, where I define sport versus hobby is actually. When when defense can't be played, then um, then I I classify those hobbies. You see, yes, yes, track. before you guys try to rip on me, that does include yeah the track does include disc golf, golf, right? You can't play tennis in those sports, or you can't play defense in those sports. Like tennis, something where there's an opponent, that's a sport. It's not even a competition. You just run around. That's a hobby. Yeah, this uh, wrestling is not even a hobby. It's just it's just a it's acting. 
That's fine. It's not easy. You got to be big. You got to be strong. You got to do all the things. But it's not. It's not a sport, guys. Do they got to train for it? You have to train. You have to train for chess, Sion. You have to train for everything. You have to train to be a I doctor. I can't wait till Gable just slaps you and says, "This fake boom." Yeah, <laughs> you because your job it's be is. Awesome. Drew yes, Blake you can is still assault sending. people. You can. Gable you can do that. Right you now. can still. You can be an actor, and Tom Cruise can Attack slap Christian me. Piles. Okay. Yeah, and, and Keanu Reeves is not a trained killer. I know you guys watch John Wick, but. He's not Who's really John that guy. Evan is that Evan's brother? It's Evan's brother. It, there's Luca, there's Xander, and John, and Evan John, Wick. Got it. Great family. It. I dare you to go kill Keanu Reeves' dog. <laughs> I'm not gonna kill Keanu Reeves' dog. <laughs> that was, that's a bad idea. Uh, just in general. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, you went off on a rant, CP. You yeah. Know. Well, y'all. I mean, y'all are audacious with your with your wrestling stuff. All right, let's get into. Let's get into some questions from friends these last couple minutes. There's one here, um, Bill Alexander, Philippi and Wenzel penalty points. What in the world is the rule? What's your take? So if you haven't watched this. Um, I have not watched it, it. It's All it is is that, that Matt return where the, they're, they got the leg in and they're kind of like the broomstick. That should not the, be a penalty. Uh, Hayden Hydley disagrees. He says it's. It should be a penalty point. He says Why? it's dangerous. Why? It's dangerous. What's his argument? It's, it's not dangerous. Aiden Hudley. I will tell me one person who's got hurt from that. One person. Perhaps Aiden. one. Perhaps Hayden has. Where? Show me the video. His knee. That's where. Dude, no one's got hurt. Christian, tell you watch. You watch more. You even watch more wrestling than me. There, I miss some matches sometimes. Name one instance where someone has been injured in that situation. I didn't. I'm not saying I have. I'm saying everyone knows this rule. It's getting called all the time, and if you're still but doing I thought, it, so I thought the rule was your feet have to leave the mat, and like I mean, maybe for a very split second by like a quarter of an inch, and that's what happening. Leaves the mat, they're, but they're, not by much. Yeah, and that's what Mickey did, and that's what Winslow did, and Roby was ready. He had the brick in hand, waiting for it to happen. As soon as it happened, boom, threw the brick, got the point, and then it happened again Bro, with Winslow. I freaking used this move since 2002. I never hurt anyone. I've never even wow. came close to hurting anyone's knee. The, never. The Hodge ever. is I've, tainted. I've, Cheating Ben Askren. My gosh. Just damaging <laughs> oh ligaments. Goodness. Well, it wasn't illegal until 2020 or 2021. But I mean, I, I'm being very I'm being very serious on it. I so sometimes I a joke. But guys, in what match was a knee injured? I don't in know. What match? I've I've literally can't name one to you, for you guys. I haven't seen one. And listen, I'm not saying there's not one. There's probably one, but it's probably a really, really low number. And so, uh, what? This is a freaking wrestling, guys. This is this is a tough sport. Are we going to ban every single thing that could potentially hurt someone? It's totally ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. so let's let's zoom in on this because this is in the rule. I was actually found this when I was looking for the Merkel. Um, so that yeah, those th not that move, not that move. Keep going down, Tyler. Keep going down. Scroll down a little bit. Okay. Uh, so th those are not the move we're talking about. Keep going, keep going. I think it's the bottom one. Yeah. This is the one we're talking about. Well, actually, that one has both behind it, looks like, right? It's, so, it's the one up that's threaded. No one does this move. Like, this is a stupid picture because no one Keegan does did. that move Keegan on did the bottom. He did no that one, exact. No, it's, Which I, one? It's, it's not. It's not. That's not what you do, Christian. I know wrestling. You put your foot on the ground, and you switch, and you pull them over your foot. You don't yeah, actually, like in the trip. air, stick the inside. Yeah, you don't do that. That's not what you. That's not how you do it. Is that the top one y'all talking about? Because I know John mm. Reader gave up a point like that in the Big 12s one year. No, not, none of these is actually the whole. Is it on the next page? I gotta okay. re, I gotta re, uh, re-download the, well, the thing. other ones with the leg in. So that's what Mickey and Jake. Those, are doing. those top ones, the top ones are actually kind of dangerous. A little yeah. bit. I've seen people be hurting those. Those ones actually are more. Uh, we scroll up, Tyler. Okay, so I uh, put it on the screen again so people can see. The top one, the, the top one, not mm -hmm. so much. I've, I've maybe seen one person be hurt. The second one, that's one that's one where people really get injured because the weight comes in, um, right? So you could have the weight going backwards and it'll, it'll the knee bends that direction. But when the people jam the weight in from the side, so you look at the guy and he's moving in towards the person. And there, I've seen a lot of injuries on that hold right there. Mm -hmm. But I've never actually seen anyone, if we scroll down one more, the third one, I've never actually seen anyone be hurt with that one either, um, but I get why coaches are mad, and uh, and I can actually I actually agree with that one. Um, 
But the bottom one, well, number one, that's not even how you do the move. So it's a, it's a shit picture. Um, and number two, I've also never seen anyone. We heard that one. <laughs> CP, I think you should come. We should demonstrate it on CP and C. It won't work on me. Are Sorry. we playing powder puff wrestling now? Are we do are we do like hard wrestling? Uh, yeah, I don't think it should be illegal. But I think if you're still doing it, you're it's it, there's another way to return. Um, Okay, no, from, no, that, hey. no, the, the, the broomstick is being used a lot in college wrestling. It was used so much in the UNI uh, uh, Oklahoma State tool. It's, it's a good mat return. Yes. Okay, from Eurekan Champ, Emma Bruntill, if, if he had to choose, would Ben Askren rather have the push-out rule implemented in folk style or for insta-death to be an actual rule? you got to choose I, one. I saw this. This is tough. Uh, I'm gonna choose. Inst I'm gonna choose insta death because I, I think insta death is gonna be like a big deal. Like I think, I think the the Hawkeye crowd, third period, Caleb Young, and insta uh, and death. Turbo, insta, going, death. Insta, insta death, death. <laughs> insta death, insta <laughs> death. <laughs> That's what's gonna happen. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, honestly, just from a branding perspective, to say your sport has insta death is just. We, that, yeah. we don't have knockouts. We have insta death. We have insta death. You're just your carcass. It, it would be a big deal. Yeah. Um, uh, honestly, I think the viewing experience of wrestling would be improved more if there was a step out rule. Um, but man, the idea of having something called insta death is just, it's. It would be so it's, awesome. It's too much for me to resist. I would not like to step out rule in college wrestling. Man, that's just your problem. You like to, you like to play no. the edge, Sion. I would All not you New like, York Bronx I, I would not wrestlers. Like, I would not. That, I think that would be crappy for college wrestling. Man, I, I think. I don't even like the one now where they call stalling if you're all there wrestling and you end up out of bounds. I don't even like that one. Sion, mm. Sion, Sion. Well, well, we don't have backs off the mat, Sion. Wait, you don't like it when someone evades action, backs on that, and wait, they wait, get wait, no. Over stall? That sounds like you don't like that. It. It's you at the referee's it. discretion because sometimes it shouldn't even be stalling, but the referee call it. It's like at the referee's no, discretion. They, call it, they need to call it more. I disagree with you, Sion. They need to call it more often. I it's don't care if you disagree with me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like they used to call it more. Now we're back to more action calls. Yeah, they yeah, but it's it's, it's yeah, at the referee's discretion. Calls. It is at the referee's discretion. Yes, the step out would take that away. Yeah, they don't. I don't want them to have that much discretion. Um, let's. Can we think. do this one from AZ Wrestling fan? Yeah, hit it. Which is more true from Kirk Cass? Cassiope stock up or Kirk stock down? Uh, I think it's Kirk stock down. Honestly. Because yes, I you, beat agree. Mason, you beat Mason Paris, that puts you, that in, in our minds after that, Elevate that puts you. you in a strata that is like rare. No one's beaten Mason Paris since his true freshman year, other yes. than Gable. Okay? So you're like, oh my gosh. And for me. He's as good as Conan Jennings. He's, 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 he's barbarian status. But now <laughs> I'm like, all right, it's Kirk Fleet's not, he hasn't, he's not in the, he's obviously not in the Gable class, right? And, yeah. And, well, the thing is, I have to watch that double thigh prize. So it may, there's a chance Greg got carvered, and maybe by the end of that duel, he was uh, out of energy from all the emotions going on there. But if that double thigh prize is, is the real deal and works against him, Colton Schultz is going to use it. Mason Paris is going to use it. I mean, yeah, it's it's going to be a big issue. So I think it's more slight stock, and it's like not major stock down. It's like it it's goes like, from. I think he's going to make the finals, too. He's probably in the two to six range. Well, y'all got to look at it this way, yeah. too, you know. Cassiope's still a good guy. Y'all talking like Cassiope's some chump. Well, Ca Cassiope has been what? dominated by Mason Paris yeah. multiple yeah. times. He's never yeah. been close, and this guy just and beat Cassiope Mason Cassiope beat him 9-0 um, last year, you know, so it's not like Cassiope didn't beat uh, – Kirk before, you know. Right, but so, the, th the thing was, Ma <clears throat> Mason uh, dominated Mason Kirk. killed Kirk Fleet, too. Yeah, but, you know, it's always a learning. The, the, the top three, mm -hmm. okay, there's number one, and then there's everybody else. But those two, three, four, they're all going they're all gonna to be around Robin knocking each other off, you know. Well, that's, yeah, I, I think there was a snare where maybe, well, one, with Mason, that's not, that's absolutely not been the case. He has killed absolutely everyone. He has been far and away He's the, killed se everyone and the then, second best guy. Then Kirk Fleet took him out. Now, um, Kirk Fleet, you know, got taken out by uh, Cassiope. So it, it could be a round robin. Right. It all depends on who gets the draw and, you know, which one's going to knock which one off to see who gets uh, massacred in the finals. No. <laughs> Pardon my language. Nothing there, against the guys. Yeah. There is a good chance Colton Schultz gets the two seed. Yeah, because they're big Because he didn't be wrestle Kirk Fleet. Yeah. 
Mm. Oh, that's so Not, As long as he stays undefeated, he would get the two seed. He, I mean, he probably will. Yeah. yeah. He's got a Pac-12 schedule. He do. Yeah, no one's beating Colton. Um, hey, but you, guys, that's, that's I got to pee so bad, and I got a private lesson in in nine minutes, so I got to run. Ben has a lot of private issues right now, I gotta, so we're, yeah. we, hey, we got to hey, stop ben, the show. Gotta, just just use a uh, take take pee under the table, man. You know, I thought don't about you have a water that, bottle on the table? I should I should have I should have a urinal, and I should just pee pull down my pants and just start. You got to do. What if you, you see me do, do this. That means I'm up because I raised up for the year. We got a near tubing situation here, so we got to go. Thank you guys so much. That was so fun today. Great show. Fun times for everyone. Hope you guys enjoyed the Royal Rumble this weekend. Just great entertainment. Um, Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Fun weekend of duels and a lot of fun coming up over the next couple weekends. I'll actually be at the Ohio State and Nebraska match. Oh, my gosh. You can sit in that side. I'll be out there chilling, you know, enjoying some good wrestling. I bet you will. Uh, Thanks so much. We will (laughs) see you next time. Happy Tuesday, guys.